Hi, welcome back. Today, I want to show you how I made an Arduino controlled turntable that can be used for 3D scanning small objects. It's been a long time since I've played with electronics, so I figured this would be a fun project to get back into that. The end goal is to be able to scan a small object and turn it into a 3D model. My original plan was to use my Xbox 360 Kinect sensor combined with a motor controlled turntable that would slowly turn the object around while software on my computer scanned the object in. Unfortunately, that didn't work out as planned, but I did end up with a working solution. I'll explain what went wrong later. But first, I had to figure out how to make a motor controlled turntable. I decided this is a good opportunity to use my Arduino, which I have barely had a chance to play with since I bought it. So I got an inexpensive stepper motor off Amazon that came with its own stepper driver board and started playing around. I modified the example source code that came with the stepper motor and was quickly able to get my Arduino to turn the stepper motor in either direction at different speeds. Then I decided to wire in a few extra features, an LED that shows very basic status of the controller and a push button switch that can start and stop the motor. I left everything wired together on my breadboard and went to work on the actual turntable. The core of the turntable is a Lazy Susan I bought off Amazon. My plan is to attach the stepper motor to the base of the turntable and it will turn a platform that's attached to the Lazy Susan. In order to transfer the stepper motor's power over to the Lazy Susan, I designed a large gear in Illustrator that I then sent to a laser cutting service. They sent me back a piece of acrylic with my design cut into it. This gear will sit on top of the Lazy Susan and turn the top of it. The turntable platform will sit on top of that and turn with the gear. But first, I needed to design a gear for the stepper motor that will drive the large acrylic gear. So within Fusion 360, I created a small gear sketch, extruded it, and then extruded a small shaft that matched the measurements of the stepper motor. It took a few tries of printing and tweaking the dimensions, but eventually I was happy with how it all fit together. I'm a little concerned that this stepper motor is not going to have enough torque to drive the Lazy Susan. So I'm going to create a quick test rig and I'm going to hold the motor and make sure that it works. I used two pieces of scrap 1x2 furring strips and hammered in some finishing nails, then clamped them down to a table with the Lazy Susan. I used masking tape to attach the acrylic gear, then moved the motor into place. I turned on the motor and was able to spin the system, even when I added a little extra resistance to the gear. Great, it works. So let's move on to making the base. To start building the turntable, I used the Lazy Susan as a template to mark out a disc on quarter inch plywood. I used my jigsaw to cut out the disc. Then I hand sanded the edges to smooth it out. I made three more discs using the same technique. For two of the discs, I wanted to remove the center, so I used the inside of the Lazy Susan as a template to draw my cut line. I started the cut with a drill and then used my jigsaw again to remove the center. Then I used loose sandpaper to smooth the edge. I needed some spacers, so I traced the outside edge onto some scrap 3 quarter inch plywood and cut the profile with my jigsaw. I marked in about 3 quarters of an inch and cut again to get the raw spacer piece. Then, I cut that single piece into four separate spacers I'll use as part of the base assembly. I glued those spacers onto one of the solid discs, spaced evenly around the edges. I pressed it together with some weights and let the glue dry up. Next, I marked the acrylic gear where it will connect to the Lazy Susan. I drilled out those holes and put the acrylic aside for now. The base of the Lazy Susan will connect to one of the centerless discs I cut earlier so I marked where the screws will go and drilled some pilot holes. I used number 6 wood screws with washers to connect the Lazy Susan to that disc. Unfortunately, I realized I needed to put the screws into the top of the Lazy Susan first, so I quickly unscrewed the base, added the top screws, and then reattached that bottom disc. The screws for the acrylic gear are number 8 machine screws. To tighten the corresponding nuts, I used a small flathead screwdriver to wedge the screw head in place and tighten the nut with a socket wrench. I tested the screwdriver before I put anything together to make sure it would work. The Lazy Susan had the perfect amount of room for my screwdriver to work this way. 
I wanted to keep the Lazy Susan detachable from the base, so I cut small pieces of quarter inch plywood and glued it to the upper portion, so the Lazy Susan would sit securely against the lower spacers. Once I glued four pieces into place, the Lazy Susan was nice and secure. I wanted the top platform to sit slightly above the acrylic gear, so I cut some small square pieces from quarter inch plywood. I drilled holes that matched the number 8 machine screws already in place, added some glue, and then put the top platform into place. After the glue dries, the top platform will also be detachable, but still sit securely against the machine screws. To finish the bottom of the turntable, I glued the last disc into place. I'll use the area in the center for the screws that will secure the motor to the base. Once the glue dried, I test fit the motor location, marked where I needed the screws to go, and drilled the holes. I used number 8 machine screws again for this, but I didn't have any that were the exact right length, so I marked and cut them to fit. For the final assembly, I made sure it sits snugly against the acrylic gear and tightened down the nuts to lock the motor into place. Once I finished the turntable, I attempted to use my Kinect sensor to scan a small item. Unfortunately, I quickly realized that the Kinect is great at person-sized objects, but is not designed for anything significantly smaller. In other words, it's not going to work for anything small enough to actually fit onto my turntable. I dug around and found out that I can use software by Autodesk called Remake to take a series of pictures of the object on my turntable and the software will convert that into a 3D model. It used to be called 123D Catch, and even though the full version requires a license, the features I need are available in the free mode. So I grabbed something to scan, put it on the turntable, and pointed my camera at it. I used my remote shutter to take a picture every few seconds while it turned, and then took another series of photos from a different height. I uploaded the pictures to Remake and then waited about 15 minutes for the Autodesk Cloud to do its thing. Once the model was ready, I could view it directly in Remake and then export it so I can use it in any other program. So my final solution was not exactly what I had in mind when I first started, but I ended up with something that actually worked, so I can't complain. Looking back, there are a few things I would change. First, I'd get a better stepper motor. The one I bought was nice because it was inexpensive and came with its own driver board, but it was kind of low on power. Stepper motors aren't that expensive, so I should have just paid a few extra dollars and not have to worry about that throughout the project. Second, I wish I knew in advance that I'd be using the camera for the 3D scan. I would have changed the logic of the Arduino to rotate the bed a few degrees, pause, and then tell the camera to automatically take a picture. And it can be programmed to repeat that until the bed has gone all the way around. This way, it'd be a one-button solution to get all the pictures I need for the model. In fact, during my last minute scramble to find a better sensor, I found someone that was doing exactly that. He used an infrared LED connected to his Arduino to send a shutter signal to the camera to take the picture. If you want to learn more about his solution, I put a link in the description below. Despite the problems, it was a lot of fun to design and build this project. Plus, I learned more about 3D scanning and the tools available to the average consumer. If you want to buy any of the components for your own turntable, Check the description for my affiliate links to the products on Amazon, and thanks in advance for anything you buy through those links, I appreciate it. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button so you can catch my new videos, and if you want to know about them as soon as I release them, press the little bell button and YouTube will handle the rest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.